Today we're going to talk about the five essential things that you need to talk with your group therapist about before starting group. Or if you are a group therapist, the five essential things you need to talk with each of your clients about before they start group therapy. So before you start group therapy, it's important to be able to meet one-on-one -on -one with the group therapist or therapists and have uh, what we oftentimes call a pre-group meeting or a group orientation or a group screen, uh, which there's a lot of things that happen in that, five things that are essential that we'll talk about today. But overall, it's a chance for you to be able to develop a connection with the therapist, uh, to be able to figure out, of course, if the group actually is a good fit for you, and by the end of that meeting to help you feel prepared to show up to your first uh, group session. And the five things that are important to talk about, of course, there's more than this you can talk about. The first is to really understand confidentiality and how confidentiality works in a group therapy setting. I did recently make a full video about how confidentiality works in group therapy. So you can check out that video. Um, <laughs> we'll hopefully put it right there, we'll see. Um, if you wanna learn more about how confidentiality works in a group therapy setting. Second essential thing to talk about is how do extra therapy relationships work? And by extra therapy, we mean, we mean when you interact outside of the therapy session. And if it's a therapy group, chances are that will be very discouraged. We don't want you to interact outside. We don't want you to be calling each other up or going to parties together or developing friendships or even going and getting coffee. Um, if it is a support group or some type of therapy groups, maybe those extra therapy relationships would be okay. Uh, sometimes they're actually encouraged in, in a lot of support group settings. Um, but you definitely want to talk with your group therapist about how those relationships, what the expectations are about extra therapy relationships. And you can definitely ask them why they're limited, why they're discouraged. Um, and there's a number of reasons why that is. The third thing that's essential to talk about are the norms about attendance. And this is different than it would be for individual therapy. Because for individual therapy, if you cancel an appointment or just don't show, it doesn't, it might not impact you that much. Uh, and the therapist will maybe meet with another client during that hour or catch up on notes or do something, and then you, you just wait until your next therapy session. In group therapy, it's different though, because if you miss, you miss out on everything that happens that day in group. And of course, the next day, the next week when you come, uh, the group will do their best to catch you up. Uh, we can never fully catch you up, but we'll, we'll try our best. Um, but you, you miss out on all that happened that day. Um, and of course, life happens and you get sick or other things come up. It's not expected that you come each week if you can't make it. Um, but there is the understanding that if you don't make it, you miss out on a whole bunch of, of what happens. And then what's actually really interesting is for the group members, the first time that someone doesn't show to group and there's an empty chair there, the group members get it on a, a pretty, on a different level that, wow, that really does impact us when so-and-so is not here. That changes the therapy for us to be missing someone. Um, and so it negatively impacts the group when you're not there. Uh, and, and of course it's real life and so it, it happens and, and there's, there's value to anything that happens in groups. So when you miss, uh, there's a lot of good things that can come from that in the way that we talk about that. Um, but it's best to have the understanding that attendance is expected each time. So that's important to talk about. The fourth thing that's really important to talk about is how does risk assessment work in a group therapy setting? And therapists might have different ways of doing this. Uh, what I find the best is to, in the pre-group meeting, the group orientation, the group screen, talk about if you have suicidal thoughts, um, or I suppose also homicidal thoughts, if in any way you might be a risk to yourself or others, that you are willing and committed to let the group leaders know about that. And you can definitely talk about that in group therapy. In fact, talking about suicidal thoughts, uh, group therapy is a great place to do that and will yield some really, really helpful things. And, and I can almost guarantee you that if you open up about suicidal thoughts in group therapy, you will not be alone. That other people either currently are having suicidal thoughts or have in the past, and they'll definitely be able to join you in that. But even if people maybe haven't, if the whole group, which would be more rare that happens, uh, we still would be able to be there for you and, and um, 
And so it can be very valuable to talk about that in group. But if you don't want to talk about that in group, that's okay. But you are committed to letting the group leaders know. So maybe shooting us an email or staying after group or contacting us somehow. Because we do want to be able to conduct enough of, the, of an assessment to know if you are safe or not. And a majority of the time when someone's having suicidal thoughts, there aren't any concerns that you're actually going to act on that. But it's our job to determine that and assess for that. Uh, and so if you're not wanting to bring that up in group, uh, we do ask you to commit to letting us know outside of group. And then maybe we can schedule an individual session if needed uh, to be able to assess that further and, and figure out how to be of help to you. And then along with that, it's important to let people know during the pre-group meetings that if somebody opens up about suicidal thoughts in group, it is the group leader's responsibility to follow up with that person and to make sure that, that person is safe. It's never the responsibility of the group members to be worrying about that outside of group. Of course, people might worry about that, but it's not your responsibility to. You don't have any any um, real life, uh, that's not the best way to say it. There's, it's outside of your jurisdiction to uh, be needing to do anything about that. And so I'll remind group members of that uh, during the group that someone opens up about suicidal thoughts as well. Um, but it's important to touch on that in the pre-group meetings. So those are the first four things. And the fifth thing that I'm including in here is it's essential to really talk about your goals and to get a good, clear understanding with the group therapist what it is that you're wanting to work on in group um, and to, to play around with how that might play out in group. Um, because you probably are going to be asked in the first session um, to be able to describe those goals to the group members so that everybody is getting an understanding of what it is that each person is wanting to work on and how we can help each person change in the way that they're wanting to change. So those are the five essential things. I could throw in a sixth, uh, which is kind of basic, but sometimes gets forgotten in the moment, uh, to talk about the logistics of the group, the time, the space that it's in, how you check in, if you check in at the front desk like usual, or if you go and you, you meet in the uh, room that the group is going to be in, or if you sit and wait in the waiting area. So there's all those type of logistical things. Um, and then of course, as I mentioned earlier, these group orientations, uh, group screens, we want you as a client to be able to ask as many questions as you can and try to get a, the best understanding of what group will be like before showing up to that first group session. Um, if there's things that I missed, if there's other things that are essential or at least really important to include in these group orientation meetings, please throw those into the comment section below. If you have questions for me, please throw those into the comment section below. Uh, unless your question is more of a confidential nature and you don't want that in the public forum, then we ask you to head on over to grouptherapycentral.com. Therapy uh, you can submit uh, through a contact form there an email that I will get and I keep that quite confidential and I can answer any questions you might have in that form. And of course, if you're interested in finding group therapy near you, uh, there's a video that we made uh, to help you be able to do that. Um, a few great online directories of finding group therapists. Um, and of course, we're more than happy to help you over at grouptherapycentral.com. Get connected to group therapy services near you that are good quality or to connect with online group therapy services uh, that if there isn't a good fit for you in your area, uh, that you'd be able to access group therapy online. Thanks so much for your time. Remember to subscribe and hit the alert button if you're wanting to be notified uh, about future videos that come up. Have a good one.